This formula gives us a way of directly knowing the prime factorization of n factorial without calculating it. I know this looks complicated, but by the end of this video, you'll understand how this formula works. Here is a pretty simple problem. How many zeros are there at the end of 10 factorial? A good way to start would be to just write out what 10 factorial is, the product of numbers from 1 to 10. We need to find factors of 10 here. We can see a 10 already, but to get a clearer picture, we will look at the prime factorization. 10 is 2 into 5. So we can see a pair at the bottom. But there's also another one hiding here. There it is. The fives are now used up, so there are no more pairs. So the answer must be two. Notice there are twos left over. This is obvious, as there will be more multiples of two than five. We really only need to count the number of fives because for every 5, there will always be a 2 to pair it with. Here is the value of 10 factorial and we were right. There are two zeros at the end. Now let's try this on bigger numbers. Now we have 103 factorial. That's a lot bigger. We can't sit here manually counting each one of the fives. That would take far too long. We need to find a formula. Let's see. For every multiple of five, there is a factor of five in our product. So we just need to count the multiples of five. Well, one in every five numbers is a multiple of five. So about one-fifth of the numbers should be multiple of 5. Let's test this on the number 16. So 16 by 5 or one-fifth of 16 is 3.2. But there are only three multiples of 5. So if we just get rid of the decimal part, we have our answer. To do just this, we have the lowest integer function. It's so just those square brackets. So that's the formula. In general, this is true for any two numbers by the same logic. If we apply our formula to 103, we get 20. So that should be the answer. Oh, it seems we've missed a few five. But where? Five can only appear in a multiple of five. So we'll just look at those. Now 5 is 5 into 1, 10, 5 into 2, 5 into 3, 5 into 4. Ah, but 25. 25 is 5 into 5. We only counted it once, but 25 contains two fives. It's 5 raised to 2. And all the other multiples of 25 must also contain two fives. So 25, 50, 75, 100. There we have it. We have our four missing fives. We need to add one for every multiple of 25. So we can just use our formula to find the number of multiples of 25. We get that term and we just need to add it to our sum. And now, yes, now it's correct. Now we get 24. But I think you can see why we will run into problems later. Let's look at the general form of our formula. 25 was 5 raised to 2. So it has two fives. But what about 5 raised to 3? It has three fives. What about 5 raised to 4? 5 raised to 5? We always need to keep adding more terms to our sum. It's never enough. So, what can we do? But infinity comes to the rescue. We can just say that the sequence of terms is endless. This infinite formula works for all numbers because it has all the terms. 
all the powers of 5. The sigma notation is a clear and concise way of writing this. There is a new variable k which starts at 1 and goes up to infinity, which means we never stop. For each value of k, we plug that value into the term at the front and add it to the sum. Let's put 103 into our formula. We start with k equal to 1 and we plug it in. That gives us our first term. Then we put k equal to 2 to get our second term and so on. Now you can see the third term here. If we look at the fraction inside, it's smaller than 1. That means this whole term is actually 0. And so are all the others that come after. Remember, this infinity is merely a notational trick. Essentially, what we're doing with this formula is finding the highest power of 5 that divides n. Pause and just make sure that you're clear on this. We've already generalized once, going from 103 to n. Let's do it again. What random choice are we making about this formula? The 5. Instead of a 5, this could work with any prime number. So let's put a variable there, p, where p is a prime. Again, you can pause and verify that the logic works. Okay, we're almost there. Now for the final step. Say we wanted to find the prime factorization of 6 factorial. 6 factorial is 720, which is 2 raised to 4 into 3 raised to 2 into 5 raised to 1. And we can continue this sequence by including all other primes, but just saying that they are raised to the power 0. So, now we can say that 2 raised to 4 is the highest power of 2 that divides 6 factorial. 3 raised to 2 is the highest power of 3 that divides 6 factorial. And so on with all the other primes. We can rewrite this using the formula that we just made. So there it is. This just takes a long time to write. So again, we'll shorten it using pi notation. We have a general term at the front. We have a condition at the bottom which says p is prime. And this pi means that we multiply all the terms together. So we go over all the primes, calculate their power, and multiply them together to get back the factorial. This is exactly what this formula does. Just like it worked with 6, it can work with any number. So there it is. Now you understand how this formula works. I hope you learned something new in this video.